Hi, this is Yohos Akhil Bhartia and welcome to another episode of TFR Let's Talk. Today we have with us Mariam Ashuri, Director of Product Management at Watson X at AI at IBM. Mariam, it's good to have you on the show. Thanks for having me. It's my pleasure. And today we are going to talk about, of course, AI. Uh, the funny thing with AI is that uh, we have been using AI for so long, but uh, we still don't have walking terminators uh, around. That's what the fear, right? Uh, but uh, Suddenly with chat GPT, open AI, gen AI, suddenly there is a kind of renewed interest in AI. There's a lot of hype uh, when it comes to AI. A lot of it is realistic, but a lot of time it's mostly just hype. Uh, but since I'm talking to you, to IBM, so I am focusing more on the enterprise space, not on the consumer space. So from your perspective, there are three questions I'm throwing at you. How mature is AI? This, you know, you can call the next generation of AI, not Gen AI, but next generation AI. Uh, how much you're seeing that it's being used in enterprise? Are you happy with progress or you feel they are not taking full advantage? So, so I just, or to summarize, the first question is more about the state of AI. I'm glad you mentioned hype. We are actually witnessing an interesting contradiction unfolding when it comes to AI. It's both overhyped and underhyped. If you think about um, the way that we are glorifying the potentials of AI and generative AI in particular for enterprise scale, it's amazing. There's been a lot of excitement around this topic over the past year in the market. But at the same time, what we are overlooking is the complexity and the roadblocks to achieve those potentials. Like a simple exam, um, sam, uh, access to foundation models and Gen AI models does not unblock business outcomes on its own. The real challenge is to build robust enterprise applications on top of those models. So enterprises are not only just exploring and investigating with AI, they, they cross the chasm all the way to production and they can scale. So behind this seamless AI enterprise application is an immensely complicated technology stack that developers need to harness. And that's where the magic happens. And that's why I think the developers are essential and critical for enterprise adoption. When you talk about complexity, uh... And, yeah, and that is, uh, I mean, we cover open source also. We cannot even talk about open source in the AI space because, once again, it's not as easy as the lab stack of, you know, uh, I mean, lab stack is already not still there. <laughs> Linux powers, you know, the world. And, you know, IBM, you folks invested billions of dollars in the early days to promote and if I still remember that ad of Linux, you know, with a small kid. Uh, anyway, the point is that some of these technologies are very, very fundamental, foundational. Uh, but you're absolutely right. It's not as easy. So talk a bit about what leads to this complexity, uh, the challenges when it comes to building AI stack. Yeah, let's, let's just um, think about foundation models, for example, for generative AI. First, you need ability to consume these models, right? Second, after that, you need to embed them into a massive mixture of technologies that make up today's IT environments. So integration with AI frameworks, the other AI models, the templates, the um, um, guardrails that are around them. And once you sort all of these out, as a developer, you need to architect various systems around this. That's really where the complexity is coming up, the complexity across all the stacks. But the essence of that complexity and the problem that it causes is the skills and the talents and the short shortage of skills that we see in terms of the AI development skills in the market. A very small number of highly trained AI developers are in the market versus the traditional pool of app developers that enterprise has access to. And the significant knowledge gap on the AI proficiency to app developers makes it very hard for developers to become AI proficient developers that can really jump into accelerating this AI development and adoption of AI technologies into an enterprise at, in production and at a scale. The side story to that, another side story is just the rate and space, um, the speed of uh, innovation in AI. Just look at the last 18 months. 
after uh, the introduction of ChatGPT to, ma- to the market, basically every single day, there is a new technology, a new tool, or a new model being fra- um, released to the market. So for developers, many of the developers, it's, it's really difficult to keep up and take advantage and adopt the most recent and valuable tools that are accessible to them. And this learning curve can impact agility for enterprises to adapt that, can impact the quality of the service that is being delivered for enterprise, can impact and potentially expose them some, to some of the security and compliance risks. Is one more uh, uh, wrench I can throw in here is uh, a skill gap. I, I had a discussion yesterday also that ironically, actually, during COVID, a lot of hyperscaler big companies, they overhired. And now we are seeing a lot of layoffs in all across the board, uh, which sometimes also sends a message that, you know what, now a lot of you know big companies are releasing a lot of talent. It will solve the talent shortage. So once again, it's two full question. One is when it comes to adoption of these technologies, as you rightly mentioned, and I would go a bit detail, detail into those complexity as well. But how much challenges organizations face when it comes to IT skill. Do they have enough talent to deal with these technologies? The reality is most of the enterprises have access to traditional app developers, not AI developers, because of the knowledge gap that we mentioned, because of the learning curve that we mentioned. And what we are really seeing in the market is most of the enterprise applications for AI are built by non-technical or relatively technical professionals. And because of that, there is a need for oversimplifying and simplifying AI development um, stack to give a chance to developers, those, remember, not AI developers, the application developers, to be able to build on top of AI technologies without the need to go and deep dive into the details of the AI models or AI frameworks, basically out of the box toolkits that can get them started, kick off and and jump start and um, guide them through this journey of developing this production quality AI applications, monitoring them and scaling them with confidence. So there's a challenge for all the enterprises and um, because of that challenge, I think the solution and the, the, there has been lots of awareness around this and there has been lots of um, investment around simplifying the AI um, stack for developers to enable a broad range of uh, and a spectrum of skills to be able to build with AI. You also mentioned a very interesting point about you know uh, app developers versus uh, you know developers who are you know very valuable with AI technologies. Uh, it's, it's funny because for the last couple of years, we kind of stopped talking about developers and we start talking about DevOps and DevSecOps and developers kind of became an afterthought. Though we do talk about shiftlet, we're moving a lot of things in developers pipeline. Uh, can you also talk a bit about, uh, uh, is it easier for an app developer to learn IT skills or is it easier for an AI developer to become an app developer. On another way, how are organizations trying to solve this skill shortage problem? Well, the, the, the skill shortage is more on the AI developers at this point, because we have a lot of um, software engineer talents that are available in the market. And they like, uh, because of the history of software engineers, they are skilled, they are trained, they have been developing applications, not AI applications, but a spectrum of applications that now they can be repurposed for AI, obviously. But AI developers are highly trained in AI models, AI workflows, and understanding really proficient in AI application development. So so to bridge this gap and um, address the shortage of AI um, developers in the market, there are a couple of things that we can do. One is, as I mentioned, simplifying the AI stack. Like if you look into um, the rapid innovation that is happening in the market, it's only complicating things. Like the new frameworks that are coming, the new technology pieces that are coming to the market, it just adds more levels of um, 
complexity to the AI technology stack and makes it harder and harder for traditional app developers to get into AI development. So that's one angle that we need to focus on in terms of creating out of the box toolkits for developers, templates, accelerators, uh, quick starters to get them rolling. The second thing that we can do is um, heavily focus on um, training. There is a knowledge gap and there is a learning curve that is associated by to learning knowledge skills. Um, so I think enterprises should double down on educating AI skills to their developers um, to help them um, at least have the knowledge and initial point of view to be able to evaluate where the market is going and how to be selective in terms of the best of the technologies that is available and coming to the market for them to take advantage of. Um, I, and the, sec the third thing is not for enterprises that are consuming these technologies. It's more on the provider side of the house, like IBM or others that are providing these AI services for developers to consume, is to make sure they are really addressing the developer needs. So for example, for us, we have been doubling down on developer uh, creating a developer experiences that are intuitive and collaborative. Um, they are paid with um, automation capabilities, uh, with built-in prompts uh, and templates. We've been doubling down on integrations out of the box for um, the stack to be integrated with not only the AI models, a range of AI models and AI fr frameworks, but also the IT stack that has been surrounding this ecosystem. So as a developer, you can spend your time, your valuable time on what matters in terms of focusing on the use case and application versus getting into the details of what is the underlying AI algorithms and frameworks to, to power that up. Every time we bring a new tool, it doesn't matter what, it does add a little bit. Sometimes it does ease a lot of that complexity. When we look at AI, Yes, of course, it adds one more layer of complexity, but does that also simplify a lot of things? Because automation, we talk a lot about automation, it simplifies things, it makes things easier. So it's more or less like, yes, it does add a bit of complexity, but it also takes care of the rest. So can you talk about the role AI is playing in reducing some of these complexities and making life easier for developers? You are absolutely right. If you look into some of the stats, like for example, IDC stats, 75% of developers expect a 10 to 50% productivity increase from AI coding assistant. And this is not just code generation. This is also automated test cases, for example. So there is an opportunity to incorporate AI for increasing the productivity of our developers in terms of um, uh, code generation, code assistant, and AI code assistant. This, this one is different than the complexity of the stack itself. So we have the stack and we have the developer skills to take advantage of um, and incorporate that stack to be able to build application. AI can heavily leverage and complement the skills of developers in terms of productivity enhancement that we can get. But also, you brought it up, we can use AI on its own to automate a lot of the steps that the developers need to go to, through. I'll give you an example. Rack, you've probably, the audience probably heard about that. It's retrieval augmented generation. It's one of the most popular um, use cases for generative AI that is allowing um, an assistant, a conversational assistant, to retrieve information and ground the res responses to a body of uh, data that is fed to the uh, model. In order to get the rack to work for developers, they need to have a good knowledge and understanding of a wide range of underneath technologies, like vector databases, the AI models, uh, the guardrails, the prompts that come into that, the chunking methods and ap applications. And, and the successful developers are the ones that really know how to configure these rack pipelines to get the model to deliver the performance that they, went, they need on the most efficient way. If you don't have access to AI developers, it's gonna be extremely difficult 
to know exactly how to configure these pipelines. But then we see AI being used automatically behind the scene to provide recommendations on what those configurations are going to look like. For example, one feature that we have released recently in tech peer review for IBM customers, we, we call it auto AI rack. That's automating the rack pipelines. It generates automatically behind the scene, generates multiple pipelines with different uh, configuration, and it shows the performance that you need on your um, task to help you in a no-code way, but also through SDKs and API to pick the pipeline that you want. This is using AI behind the scene, automating some of those configurations for the developers, providing recommendations in terms of the stack to use, which at the end of the day, not only increases the productivity for developers, but also the time to value for enterprises to take it and that advantage of AI and adopt those. I mean, we talked about complexity challenges when we look at cloud, cloud native space or Kubernetes space, I mean, the scale becomes a challenge. Some what kind of challenges AI face when it comes to scale? Because you know, depending on the organization you're dealing with, massive versus smaller. Uh, how what are you seeing there? Are people hitting the scaling problem, or no? That's a solved space. Yes, um, and I'm glad you brought it up. If you look into last year, there was lots of excitement about Gen AI. But this year, the market has moved toward how to best monetize that technology. Last year, they were exploring and investigating with this technology. This way, almost half of the market has moved to pilots. And a good percentage of that have, has moved to production. As they moved from exploration with AI to production, they soon realized the path to success is not that straightforward. When you're exploring with AI, you're looking for a wow factor. You're looking for an aha moment. Specifically for generative AI, that's really why general, very large general purpose models shine. But the larger the model, the larger compute resources it requires. That translates to an increased cost for enterprise. Just think of the scale of the enterprise, the number of API calls per day that they need to send to this uh, model. So that translates to cost, that translates to latency and the response time, and that translates to carbon footprint and energy consumption. And because of that, the trend that we are seeing emerging in the market for enterprise adoption of AI is to focus on smaller co models, customize them on their proprietary data. That's the data about their customers. That's the domain specific data that they have access to to create something that is differentiated and delivers the performance that they need for not a wide range of use cases, for the target use case that they need for a fraction of the cost. That, and that's really the recipe of success on maximizing on the ROI of AI investment for enterprise. Aryam, thank you so much for uh, taking time out today to join me and talk about, of course, the whole uh, state of AI, what challenges are there, and of course, how you folks are kind of trying to ease some of the pain points that developers face, how you're trying to solve some of the problems that enterprises face. So thanks for those great insights, and I would love to have you back on the show. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you.